Hi, my name is Catherine Bennett and I'd like to welcome you to the Cyber Chat Studio, a podcast dedicated to cyber security. And in this first episode, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself, as well as why I wanted to do this and what is coming up next. I get so many requests on LinkedIn from people outside of the industry who say, I really want to get into cybersecurity. How do I break in? Where do I start? What do I learn? What role would you suggest? Or even what companies do I target? And so many more. I will go over this in a little more detail shortly, but I tend to fire questions straight back, such as, why do you want to get into cybersecurity? What do you enjoy doing? Where do you see yourself in 5, 10 or even 15 years from now? Or even what type of person are you? So I'm hoping to shed some light in terms of what working in the industry is like, some useful interviews from industry peers and insights into some incredible technology and solutions. But my second reason for doing this podcast is the vast disconnect between sellers and buyers in this industry, as well as a central platform for intelligence, data, research, collaboration and more importantly, news and upcoming technology. We have changed the way we sell solutions dramatically. In my first sales job, I used to run through the yellow pages and call companies. I would run through the Financial Times and create a list of corporations to target that were on the FTSE 100 charts. But that was a long time ago. There were no restrictions around cold calling then, no GDPR to adhere to, home workers didn't exist, Very few mobile phone numbers were available and the amount of emails we received was far less than it is today. Now it's become increasingly difficult to get hold of people and many end users are bombarded with numerous sales tactics. We rely on platforms such as LinkedIn, white paper downloads, website inquiries and let's not forget the holy grail of it all, customer relationships. But if we are new and just setting out, How do you get to speak to a person in the first place to then start to build a relationship from the beginning? We all live in a competitive world. In times of COVID, we saw events such as wine tasting evenings, Zoom or Teams calls with industry experts. Now we tend to see roundtable dinners, webinars or seminars. But how many invites do CISOs and security managers actually receive? And how do resellers manage multiple vendors all fighting for the top spot. We're all the best thing since sliced bread, right? If you work for a security vendor, as in a company that produces or manufactures security technology, then most people tend to pitch how great their technology is, how they are market leading, how they solve challenges that they believe are important and use a network of resellers to grow that business. Far too often we steam into a prospect or a customer using those precious first 30 seconds of an introduction to bombard them with how great we are and not really understanding them at all. This is where the value of sales methodologies like Medic or e-value selling are invaluable. You wouldn't go on a first date telling the other person how incredible you are without getting to know them first, would you? They would think you are too pushy and arrogant. So why are we any different when it comes to selling? Well, because we all have targets to hit and are under constant pressure to achieve them, of course. Instead, we should be taking the time to understand what hobbies they have outside of work. Do you know much about their family? What food do they like? What sort of person are they? And then on to what their work pressures are. What drives them? What would make their lives easier? And how can you help them? Most resellers are adopting a vendor agnostic approach to selling solutions. They discover the most pressing issues and challenges and how they can solve them. This gains trust from their customers as value-added suppliers and a technology specialist with their best interests at heart. As vendors, we should be arming our resellers with the challenges we solve and how our partners address them so that they can sell more effectively. The next thing for me is my love and interest in cybersecurity. I've been working in this space for many years now and want to explain why I still like what I do. First and foremost, working for a good company is important. Choosing an employer that values their employees, supports their well-being inside and outside of work and the community that the company builds and sustains as well as their growth plans as a business is key. Secondly, an interview is just as important for you 
to work for your manager as it is a manager wanting you to work for them. It's a two-way street. Ask questions. What sort of person are they looking for? What are they trying to achieve? How do they like to work? And how do you like to be managed? You spend more of your life at work than you do at home. So if it's not the right fit, you won't be successful and you won't want to be successful. So what really is the aim of this podcast and how do I bring value to you as a listener? So many reasons. I want to know what is important to you. What role do you play? What do you want to learn? And let's collaborate. I would like to create a library of useful content that is relevant and interesting to all of my listeners, both resellers and end users. So a little about me. I started my career way back in 1998. Gosh, that sounds such a long time ago. I was 18 at the time and my son was just 12 months old. I wanted to go to university at Royal Holloway in Egham to study English language and literature to become a secondary school teacher but the tuition fees and the cost to put my son into childcare while studying was way too expensive. I had spent the first year of his life looking after him during the day, attending college during three evenings to finish my A-levels and the remaining evenings and weekends working at a local hotel. There was no maternity pay or leave back then, so as soon as I passed my A-levels, I needed to find myself a full-time career. It was by pure chance that I started working for an IT company in sales support, the recruitment agency that I reached out to recommend, and the journey began. It gave me a foot in the door, but the more time went by, the more I realised that I didn't want to be processing orders. I wanted to be the one getting the orders in. I wanted to sell, to get to know the customers and to earn commission for my growing family. I read books. I went on courses. I learned the products. I shadowed those who were successful and I was desperate to show my true potential. By 19, I was in business development, cold calling. By 20, I reached inside sales. By 21, I moved into external sales for a telecommunications company and smashed every target there was year on year. It was a booming industry until Nortel Networks crashed and made headline news. It was at that point that I considered my options and what I wanted to do next. So I moved into IT networking. It was more complex, learning about data, packets, computer networks, routers, hubs and switches, but I found it fascinating. By 25, I was highly successful, bringing up two children by this stage and building my corporate relationships. However, being a woman in the industry at that particular time was more difficult than it is today. No women in technology awards that you have in today's day. I wanted to stand out from the crowd, so I began learning the ins and outs of the world I was in and how it all pieced together, and the ability to discuss complex solutions with customers so that I could hold my own conversations and show my credibility. By 30, I thought I knew it all and decided to run my own business. I also wanted to understand people, how they functioned, body language and drivers. I thought it would be important in making me a successful salesperson, so I started a degree with the Open University in Psychology in my own time. At 33 and on your own running a business was tough. Despite learning so much and gaining experience, I found myself working more than 15 hour days, seven days a week, and when it comes to cash flow, sometimes the big companies pay the small companies last, so I headed back into the corporate world and focused on what I loved the most, selling and being with customers. Not much had changed in IT. The fundamentals remained, but by this time, cybersecurity was rapidly growing. It seemed to be fast-paced, evolving and a new area to move into. Coupled with the experience of running a business, I understood marketing, business plans, forecasts, pipeline generation, thinking outside the box and creating something phenomenal from very little resources. So I moved into channel and working with resellers supporting them, growing them, enabling and training them, as well as getting to know new people and building relationships. Now, having learned so much, I've travelled the world with work, published three books and taking my roots from English and my love of IT security. I now want to bridge the gap in this industry to understand how resellers work, what is important to them, what vendor technologies are the latest and greatest, what are the industry trends, research, analysis, what people really do in their role 
and how we can collaborate together to create something truly incredible. I'm bringing all this together in one platform. So I guess this takes me right back to my first discussion point. Number one, why cybersecurity and what is the size of the addressable market that we work in? And more importantly, why are people wanting a piece of it? Well, according to market researchers Canalis, the worldwide cybersecurity market grew 12.5% year on year in the first quarter of 2023 to $18.6 billion, outpacing the rest of the tech sector despite worsening macroeconomic conditions. In addition to this research from Statista, states that re revenue in the cybersecurity market is projected to reach $162 billion in 2023. Cyber services dominates the market with a projected market volume of $85 billion in 2023, and the average spend per employee in the cybersecurity market is projected to reach $46 by the end of this year. So what will it look like in the future? A recent article from LinkedIn suggests that it is expected to reach $242 billion by the year 2028, and cyber attacks are a serious concern, particularly to high-value targets including government agencies, defence and aerospace. Therefore, cybersecurity is a vast market and is continuing to grow at an exponential rate, a healthy industry for anyone looking to join. Those really are impressive statistics considering cybersecurity began back in the 1970s when researcher Bob Thomas created a computer program called Creeper that could move across ARPANET's network, leaving a breadcrumb trail wherever it went. Ray Tomlinson, the inventor of email, wrote the program Reaper, which chased and deleted Creeper. Reaper was the very first example of antivirus software and the first self-replicating program, making it the first ever computer worm. So that's a little bit about the history. The second reason why I love cybersecurity is that there is a constant evolving plethora of technology solutions. Insider threat management, deception technologies are just a few to name, all dealing with cyber attacks that have crept into the market in recent years. Did you know that there are currently an estimated 39,000 cybersecurity companies globally that provide products and services? That is staggering and that the damage to businesses is an estimated $10.5 trillion as of the end of 2023. My third area of interest is the variety of different markets that need different requirements and is a growing is a, as a result of compliance and regulatory standards. For example, financial services and insurance, or FSNI as we call it, retail and hospitality and public sector, GDPR, Cyber Essentials, NIST, ISO, PCI, DSS, and the list goes on. There are many other policies that exist and are constantly evolving, creating a need for implementing cybersecurity solutions to adhere to these standards, making the life of technology professionals easier to cope with. Finally, number four, there are so many roles in cybersecurity, from sales to marketing, product owners, technical specialists, sales engineers, operations, help desk, analysts, CIOs, CISOs, you name it. It would be really interesting to find out more about each of these roles and the challenges and solutions that surround them, and for anyone wanting to break into the market. I will be posting weekly the upcoming interviews and intelligence as I record them. But if you also have any suggestions, feedback, or would like to feature in any of the upcoming episodes, please do get in touch.